Here are folks. The second derivative test is going to let us know whether or not we have a local maximum, so a peak or a local minimum or a trough. So if we don't have a graph and we can't see the function, how are we supposed to determine if that indeed is a max or a min value? This is where the second derivative test comes in. So let's go back to this question. How do we know this is a maxima? I have a graph in front of me so I can look at it and say, yep, that looks like a maximum. How can we do it without a graph? Let's go through and sketch some tangents and estimate some tangent values. So here's a tangent and it looks to be positive and it's steep. So if I were to plot it, I'm gonna plot it here. So it's positive. I don't quite know the number. I'm just gonna estimate the numbers at this point. Let's pick another point here. So this tangent is still positive and it's not as steep. So I'm gonna plot this one here. Right at zero, this is where I have a special point. So we can recognize that the slope here is zero. And so this should be our turning point of my parabola. Now to plot that, I come down to the zero. So I'm coming down here. So I'll put circles around my tangent slope plots. Okay, so let's do another one over here. Now we've turned from positive to negative slopes. So this one is coming down below the axis. So I'm gonna put it there and I will do one more. This one's also negative and it should go maybe about there. So now I'm going to draw a line connecting all of these and just do that one more time because I missed a few there. So this looks something, that one looks pretty darn good. So this is now my derivative, right? My gradient function. So the slope of the parabola gives me a derivative and the slope is going to tell me all about this function. So around my turning point, I wanna determine if this is a maximum or a minimum. If it's a maximum, then just to the left is going to have a decreasing function output and just to the right is also going to be less. If it is a minimum, I can sketch that off to the side here, right? If it's a minimum, here's my turning point. then just to the left is going to be bigger and just to the right is also going to be bigger. So around my turning point, what I have here is in my first derivative on the purple line, I have a positive value and then past the turning point, I have a negative value. So if my first derivative here goes from positive to negative, that indicates that I have a maximum. And what does that mean if we go from uh, positive to negative, well the only way to do that is to have a downward sloping derivative or a negative sloping derivative. So the value of the slope tells me which way my original function is either increasing or decreasing around the turning point. So there's a, a lot to take in there, but one thing we can do is let's just plot the slope of my derivative. So what's the slope of my derivative? Well, just pick a point. Here's my rise. Here's my run. So this derivative has a negative slope. And if I were to plot the derivative at every single point, it turns out that it's a straight line has the same slope everywhere. So this green line now is the gradient function of the derivative or the derivative of a derivative and this we call a second derivative. And in this case it's negative and a negative tells me that I have a local maximum. 
let's check in with how this looks on Desmos. So here's the function. Now I didn't have the values before, but this is what it is, minus 2x squared plus 2. And I can just quickly sketch up the first derivative here. And we can look at some of the behavior. So I've got a turning point at 0, 2. And so that first derivative crosses right at 0. And it's a negative sloping line. Yeah. So let's look at the second derivative now. And it says the second derivative here evaluates straight to negative 4. So it won't plot it for us. But we can go ahead and override that. And I can say y equals negative 4. And then I can see that this green flat line represents my second derivative. And you can kind of decode the behavior from the graph. So I know from the graph I have a max. And my second derivative at this point is negative. In fact, it's all negative 4. And so that tells me it's a maximum. If I were to change this to positive 2x squared, right, my parabola flips. My derivative line is now positive, And the derivative second derivative evaluation is positive 4. So my line here that I graphed, I would have to update this and say positive 4. And then the positive second derivative indicates a local minimum. Let's summarize and write down a statement for this second derivative test. So the notation is just f double prime at x. Double prime means derivative. And then what we're going to say is we want to check whether or not it's bigger or less than 0. So if f double prime at x is less than 0, that was the first one that I went through, f double prime at x is less than 0, this means that that turning point at x is actually a local maximum. So if the second derivative evaluated at x is less than 0, this means anything negative at all. In the example we saw it was negative 4. That means the point is a local maximum. So the other part of the statement says second derivative at x is greater than 0. This means that x comma f at x is now a local minimum. And that is our second derivative test written down in a mathematical form in a statement. And so this means using this test, all you have to do is run these evaluations, see if it's bigger or less than 0. And you don't need a graph. You don't need a picture of what's going on to know if it's a maximum point or a minimum in the local area. Here I have some functions that I plotted using Desmos. And so I'll just run through it again with graphs that are much neater than the ones that I drew. So to start with my f at x, this is my original, my standard function. So on the left here, in blue, it's a parabola. That's my function. In green, f prime at x, this is now my first derivative, just one prime symbol. So that's my first derivative. And if I have a parabola, f at x, after I take a derivative, remember you subtract 1 from the exponent, so degree 2 becomes a degree 1, and that's this straight line. So that's my first derivative. Now we can look at the slope of that straight line, and we can say, indeed, that looks like it's a positive slope. So we can look at my second derivative, which is in the dashed line. And that slope is evaluating to positive. And positive is greater than 0 down here in my summary box. Therefore, we have a local minimum. So you don't need the graphs to tell you this, but it can help you to follow along visually. My second example, I started with a cubic. So we have these arms coming up and then down. So that's a cubic function or an odd degree function. And that's my original function here in blue. After you take the derivative of a cubic, I get a parabola. And that is this first derivative in green, f prime at x. Take a second derivative, 
to get to f double prime at x, and now I have a straight line with a negative slope. So the negative slope tells me that at this point, plus one, now in this one I actually have, I have two turning points, right? So at plus one, okay, the value is negative 12, and therefore it's a local max. But look at this, at minus one, right, at minus one I have another turning point. Here the value of the second derivative is positive 12, and that is greater than zero. So that tells me, therefore, that this is a local minimum. So the second derivative cannot just be generalized based on the slope. What you have to do is you have to look at the value where the point of interest is. So my turning point was at one, so I look at the value, which is minus 12 on my second derivative, or over here the value at minus one was plus 12 to give me a local minimum. Let's run through an example. So we have here a cubic function and we want to find the turning points and state their nature. So are they maxes or are they minimas or local maximums or local minimums? Okay, so to find a turning point, I have uh, three steps I need to do. I need to, first of all, I need to find the derivative and then I need to find where it equals zero, where the slope is zero. So derivative, set it to zero, solve for x and that will find my turning points. So let's go ahead. So first derivative, I'll just write y prime. One third times three is just one x squared uh, minus two times a half, so that's minus x and then minus 12 is my first derivative. So my next step then is to set to zero and I'll just write this down set derivative to zero. Remember, we're looking for slopes that are flat. And then I need to solve this. Now this looks like a quadratic equation, so I can probably factor it into some double brackets. Pop x into my first slot. Factors to multiply to get to minus 12. Well, we've got plus four and minus three. You could also try 6 and 2 and 1 and 12, but I think plus 4 and minus 3 are where we want. And then I'll just do a quick check, and I see that I'm going to have plus 4x and minus 3x will be plus x in the middle, and I need negative x. So let's just change the sign, minus 4 and plus 3. That's still equal to 0. And now I need to solve for the x values. So too many equations. x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 4. And by the same logic, x also equals negative 3. So I have two possible values, and that's because I solved a quadratic equation, which can lead up to two solutions. Okay, so at these points, I need to know if it's a maximum or a minimum. So I also need to find the y values. I might just leave that uh, until the end or as an exercise. So next up, to determine max or min, we will use the second derivative test. So I need a second derivative now. Maybe I'll change colors. So y prime prime, double derivative. So I'm taking this equation and I'm deriving it again, equals two x minus one, and the minus 12 differentiates to zero. So just two x minus one, and that's f double prime at x.
Okay, so that's my second derivative. I mean, I could think, well, what does that mean? That's a straight line, it's got a positive slope. But as I saw in the last example, that doesn't just tell me the nature if I have more than one special point. So I need to evaluate the second derivative at the turning points. So I'm going to switch notation a little bit here and I'm going to say f double prime at 4. And that means I'm going to sub in 4. 2 times 4 minus 1. And now I'm looking to see if at this point it's bigger than 0 or less than 0. So you can uh, do this. I don't need to estimate it here, but if you have bigger numbers or higher exponents, you can just estimate and um, you don't need your exact algebra. So this is 8 minus 1 equals 7, which for sure is bigger than 0. And so what does that tell me? That tells me that at x equals 4, I know I have a turning point. Without looking at the graph, I don't know if it's a max or a min. But because the second derivative is greater than 0, greater than 0, I can say, therefore, the point is a local. And do you have it? Minimum. Now, I don't know what the point is. I'll have to go back. I'm asked to solve for the points. I'll have to go back and solve for that y value. I'm not done yet, though. I got one more, right? f double prime at negative 3. So we sub in negative 3 into the second derivative. And this equals minus 7. Minus 7 is less than 0. Therefore, at x equals minus 3, there is a local maximum. So you can pause it and look at these results or type them into Desmos and judge for yourself that you have indeed found a, what do we have here? We have a minimum at 4 and a max at minus 3. One question that perhaps has come up that's been left unanswered is what happens if this second derivative equals zero? We've talked about bigger than zero and less than zero, and that will give me a max and a min. So we saw this example already. So here we have a local max, and the second derivative was less than zero. Here we have a local min, and the second derivative was greater than zero. But what about when the second derivative, so that was, I'll just relabel my graphs here. The parabola was my first derivative, and the dotted line was my second derivative. So when my second derivative equals 0, well, it goes right through the origin. There it is. Second derivative equals 0. There it is. And what does that tell me? Well, if I look at my original function, I'm looking in blue now at the cubic. My original function, I come down, I have a local min, I go up to a local max, and then I go down again. Now, in between the max and the min, at some point, these slopes here are increasing, and then at some point, the slopes start to decrease, right? Slope of the tangent here is increasing. We get to some point and now the slope of the tangent is decreasing. So this point where it switches between increasing and decreasing, that's another special point, and that is called a point of inflection. And how do you find that point of inflection? Well, you need to find the point where the second derivative equals zero, and then you can step in and find it. Specifically, this is where the derivative changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So in this case, the derivative is my parabola and the derivative is increasing, 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 increasing just a little, just a little, and then it starts to decrease, decrease, decrease. So between the increase and the decrease, that maps out that point of inflection. Now, it could also be the other way around where it changes from decreasing to increasing.